Fence Marketing Profit Podcast. Interviews with million dollar plus fence and gate business owners on how they market and grow their companies in today's economy. Hear directly from the most successful leaders in your business and discover what they're doing to keep their phones ringing, trucks running, and businesses booming with your host, Scott Andreessen. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to join this AFA webinar, High Ticket Fence Sales Training, presented by Scott Andreessen. Before we start, I'll be taking a couple of, I'll be stating a couple of housekeeping items to help us as presenters and you as attendees have the best experience. First, all attendees are muted. This allows us the opportunity to present our carefully crafted presentation and provide a more robust webinar for all attendees without being interrupted by background noise or any other various items that may happen. We understand that as an attendee, you may have a question that pertains to your company, the topic, and would like to ask that question to our presenter. Periodically throughout the webinar, we will take time to answer these questions. In the GoToWebinar console slash dashboard, there's a section where you are able to ask questions. Please use this feature to ask all questions. If the question is off topic or for some reason we run out of time, we'll follow up on all questions via email with answers. In addition, our staff will be monitoring the chat feature on the GoToWebinar dashboard. However, we will not be answering questions unless the aforementioned question functionality is used. If you sit through the webinar and don't think of a question until later on, like we sometimes do, please send us an email at memberservices at AFA.com, and we will respond promptly. If you have joined us on the mobile app, we will be presenting both webcams from our speakers and a PowerPoint. If you can only see one of these items, please swipe left or right to toggle between both of these during the webinar. If you have to drop off or for some reason your internet connection stops working or slows down, do not worry. We are recording this webinar and will provide to all of our members via the members only portal. If you are not a member and would like to retrieve a copy, please email us at memberservices at AmericanFenceAssociation.com. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce today's presenter. Scott Andreessen is the CEO of Fence Marketing Team, a consulting firm for fence companies. They assist in different aspects of the sales, marketing, and overall business systems. Earlier this year, Scott published a book called Internet Marketing for Fence Companies. You might have seen him at the latest Fence Tech Convention or on YouTube or on Facebook, where he's quickly gaining a consensus as a, knowledge, as a knowledgeable expert in our industry. Scott, take it away from here. Awesome. Thank you, Corey, for uh, the introduction. That's awesome. And uh, Everyone who's joining, you know, I'm going to do my best to make sure you get the most value out of this. And of course, pat yourself on the back for taking this time to focus on your business because uh, that's super important. So we can go ahead, I guess, and just dive right into it. And so this is part of the uh, AFA educational series, Fence Sales Training for Building a Predictable Fence Business. And uh, some of you guys saw me post around Facebook, you know, to invite people to this. And um, I've talked with just hundreds of con fence contractors over the past two years. And, you know, some of them are really struggling to grow their business. And the, the question always boils down to, so, you know, how many hours you work a week? And I'm hearing like 70, 80, even 100 hours a week. And they're just starved for time. And then it's like, well, tell me about your sales process. And it's like, well, you know, they call me, I go out there, I drive across town and then, you know, I meet them and then I do this and that. And then, you know, I get back to the office. Then I put together this uh, quote that I emailed them the quote that it's like my head exploded 20 seconds ago. You guys can definitely, you know, that's kind of the goal of this is keep it simple, keep it really simple. And a lot of this, you can just knock out on the phone and and qualify it and get right into it and shorten your sales process and by doing that you're saving yourself 5 10 15 hours or more per week and so that 60 70 80 100 hour work week that's ridiculous starts getting shorter so then you can focus on your business and so we're going to we're going to tackle that we're going to also going to tackle about um, dealing with maximizing your profits on these fence sales calls. Um, the other main thing I hear from the guys, the fence contractors especially that are struggling and just not 
seeing any growth is they're playing this game of price matching. And from the, the fence contractors that have really scaled their businesses revenue wise, I'm not saying you need you need or want to grow to five, 10, 15, 20 crews. I'm not saying that's that's you and you need to do that. But the ones that want to grow revenue and everyone wants to grow revenue, they're maximizing their bottom line. OK, so they're focusing on selling high value, high ticket fences. All right. So let's get into it. Let's dive right in right now. So first off, there are some training materials you can go ahead and get now or at your own time. That's a, uh, a sales script, fencemarketingteam.com forward slash sales. You can go ahead and, and get that for free. And if you stay till the end, there's a very special surprise for you. You're gonna get the, I'm gonna tell you how to get, absolutely free, the ultimate fence and gate online marketing checklist and the most commonly searched fence keywords for SEO and pay-per-click. So it uh, it's a nice little reward if you stay for the whole thing. I like to start these off with a quote. And um, for those of you who don't know Zig Ziglar, he's pretty much the man when it comes to sales and uh, was a big motivational speaker. And he says, people don't buy for logical reasons, they buy for emotional reasons. And it's 100% true, and it's something that really shouldn't be forgotten. That, you know, we all think, okay, you know, I gotta give them the best price, and, you know, it boils down to price. And really, people are buying the fence, not just to have a fence, they're buying the fence for a reason that's emotional. And we're gonna cover that. It's easy to find out if you know how to ask. So today's agenda, we're gonna start off by debunking some sales myths within fencing that um, I hear quite a bit. How to handle inbound calls for high ticket residential fence and gate sales. Inbound qualifying the best fence and gate leads on the phone for selling high ticket. Overcoming common objections. So overcoming, um, this type of objections to probe a little bit and schedule more estimates. And then maximizing your leads, taking what you got and getting more out of it. And then sales killers, things that you absolutely do not want to say um, because they can really detract your prospect and make them not wanna buy from you. So, um, you know, right now for most markets, things are really good, right? Like everyone is in their peak season and, COVID has done nothing but increase demand, it seems like, because people are at home. And, you know, this is all awesome. It's all awesome for business. Who would have thought, right? But we know that this is not the new norm, that this is going to taper off. And, you know, it's kind of scary to think that, but we know it's coming. We know that that COVID bubble is going to burst. So you folks that are on this webinar are really smart because you're preparing yourself. You're starting to think. You're starting to, um, you know, focus on the future. And, and so this is, I believe, is going to be one of the most valuable investments of your time all year. So um, Corey already laid out the ground rules. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. You know, just silence your cell phones, lock your doors. If you're a fence or gate business owner and you're serious about selling more high ticket fences, you are definitely in the right place. And like Corey said, we will pause here and there for questions, um, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end. He already gave a brief introduction to me, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this either. Um, basically, I've been a professional in sales since 96. Chances are, if uh, you bought a Florida Bahamas vacation in the late 90s, it was from me, or if you bought a timeshare on the resale market, I was that guy, so yeah. Um, I'm the author of uh, How to Triple Your Sales by Getting Your Internet Marketing Right, Internet Marketing for Fence Companies. I've done 12 years in digital marketing. And then the last two years um, has been solely focused around fence and gate businesses um, in terms of inbound sales and marketing. And I'm also a member of the AFA. So if you folks are not a member of the AFA, I highly suggest you check them out. For me personally, it, um, it really all became real to me when I went to that first fence tech convention and I saw how enormous um, 
you know, of an effect. It was just a great camaraderie of fencing professionals in the industry. It was really cool. And, um, and I loved it. So, you know, check them out. So sales myth, I need to meet each and every person or every prospect in person. I hear this so many times, so many times. And I don't want to stereotype. I don't want to stereotype. So I'm not going to say, you know, who I hear this from and whatever. But folks, this is a myth. This is totally a myth. You, it, It's not like, you, you, it just doesn't work that way. I mean, I know that you may think it works that way, that it's going to help, but it's it's not going to set yourself apart by meeting them for that personal touch. Um, so I think you're doing yourself a disservice and probably the biggest disservice you're doing yourself is wasting time by doing that. So we're going to tackle this on this call of you can be very personal on the phone. You don't you don't actually need to go out there and, you know, with the way things are with COVID, you know, the business environment has changed anyway. So um, I must sell fences cheaper than my competitors. This is another one that I hear all the time. You know, how are they getting their materials so cheap? And they're trying to do this race to the bottom. And just by using some sales techniques I'm going to show you in this webinar, it's totally okay to have a quote that's $1,000 more than your competitor, $2,000 more than your competitor. The, the main reason is why. How, how can you justify that price? What makes you so special that you can charge $1,500 more for the same fence as a competitor? So we're going to get into that because you can and you will. People buy fences based on price. You, you know, really, they don't. Really, they don't. They may say they do, but it's proven that people buy for emotional reasons. You just need to tap into that and then give them a reason why they should buy from you. So that's getting a big red no-no from me. So some sales truth. People buy based on emotions and feelings. So they will, they feel they want privacy from their neighbors. That's why they want a fence. They, they want privacy or they feel their fence looks old and ugly. So they, they feel like, you know, they're, they're that, they're that group on the block, you know, that, oh my gosh, everyone's staring at our fence and they probably say how ugly it looks or they feel their, their children or dog would be better protected. They want to be good parents or they want to, you know, be a good owner of their pet and let it, you know, run free in the backyard. So these are things that we tap into that are the hot buttons and we use these on the sales calls. These are the little bullets. These are the little, you know, um, what's the expression? The, uh, the ace in our pocket, so to speak, that we're gonna use on the call. You don't need to meet every prospect in person and you'll make more money selling based on value rather than price. So the old school versus new school way of selling, the old school salesperson was seen as someone who persuaded, spun fact and fiction, and did just about anything to make a sale. But the modern day fence seller is seen as an educator, an advisor, a consultant who challenges, teaches, and helps customers. So let's talk about you know, aggressiveness and you know being pushy and a pushover there's a fine line there and this is where having that that human intuition of being able to read your prospect really kicks in are they just making excuses it's okay to ask direct questions to your prospect and when they dodge it it's okay to re-ask that direct question again in a different way until you get the answer you're looking for. I, I see a lot of people, when I monitor these sales calls, I've, I've listened to hundreds of, of sales calls from clients and you know they'll ask a question to the prospect and the prospect just dodges it. They just straight up dodge the question and then the, the fence contractor doesn't follow up 
and, and ask it again. It's like you just let them off the hook. If you just stay at it, you know, that that's where you make the real progress is by not letting go of it. And so there's a fine line between pushy and pushover. You can't be like, hey, I just asked you a question. You better answer that question. You know, you don't want to do that. There's there's subtle techniques to that, a little finesse. So we're going to cover that. It's, of course, OK to overcome objections and it's OK to ask for their business. So what we're looking to do on these initial inbound calls is we're looking to really um, tie them up, wrap it in a bow and have it 90% sold before you get out there by covering all of our bases up front. So let's go ahead and get into it. Our purpose and objective is to schedule estimates only for high probability sales. And so when I was talking just a little bit ago about how certain people, and I'm not gonna say their name, that you know they drive out to each and every prospect to give the personal touch, it's, hey, you know, what's your address? Okay, I can be over there later on this afternoon. No, 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 it doesn't work that way. OK, they don't get your time. The time is more valuable than money. It's the most important thing you have on this planet. So you need to guard it with a safe box and you ask the right questions to ensure that they're a high probability sale. So we're looking for those who tell us explicitly that they need to get it done now or within a month, because even if they're saying within a month, Really, if they have a sense of urgency of why they should buy now, then they'll do it. If they're saying two, three months off, we'll get into that. Really, you need to probe a little deeper because that could be BS. And the most important goal, of course, is to save our valuable time. So here's an outline for a residential call to follow. A nice greeting getting their information, name, phone, address, email, talking about the fence, you know, what are you interested in? We're not gonna give up any information at this point, okay? We're just creating a little rapport. We're being investigators right now. Why do you want the fence? We're looking to get that hot button. We're looking to get the reason why. It's not just, hey, I need a fence. How much is it? Okay, what kind of fence? Here's the price, no. Find out why they want the fence. Are you the sole decision maker when it comes to the fence? So we want to make sure we have the person who can make the decision. Okay, if it's a husband wife team that make it together, then we'll cover that. Are we your first call or have you already gotten another quote so you can compare apples to apples? What kind of budget were you thinking you'd like to invest in a fence? Assuming we can meet all your conditions of satisfaction with regards to price, materials, and installation, how soon would you be able to start? Or how soon would you like to start? This question right here, this last one, is the money question. That's where it cuts through all the BS and you know if this person is worth your time or not and you know how soon they're going to buy the fence are they looking to buy it now are they looking to buy it next year you're going to find out and cut through it all right with this question assuming we can meet all your conditions of satisfaction with regards to price materials and installation how soon would you like to start okay so remember that one that one's huge Optional strategy, there's technology, of course, and you can use online estimating tools. You can use Google Earth to get, uh, if they don't know their measurements, pull up the, the address and get the, get the footage, okay? If you don't already do that, you don't know how to do that, or you don't know the online estimating tools, you may wanna look into that um, and get familiar. My Salesman's a real popular one. And uh, I'm familiar with that. And uh, my clients like it. I don't work for the company or anything, but it's a good product. Give them the budget range 
overcome objections of the quoted price and schedule the estimate. Okay, this last one is a little uh, controversial. You know, people don't like to discuss price and this and that. If you're well prepared and and able to justify your price, um, then my opinion is you handle it on the phone. Okay, um, it, different strokes for different folks. Again, what I'm doing is I'm giving you guidelines. You can take these guidelines and and do what you want with them. Okay, I'm not saying that this is the set way. You need to do it this way, my way, or the highway. That's not what I'm saying. Um, what I am saying is that my way cuts through the red tape, it cuts through the BS, it, get right, it gets right to the heart of the matter. So at the end of the day, you know where you stand. And if it's a total tire kicker, that's cool. Just add them to like a lead nurture funnel or an email campaign, and maybe they'll get back to you later. So let's start off with a nice greeting. Um, I want to start off with you know some some bad greetings first. What I hear on some of these calls is um, is is kind of the wrong way to go about it. Like for instance, you have a company name, so at a bare minimum, say the company name. You don't want to be answering the phone, yeah, and and no joke, that happens. Yeah, yep, hello, yeah. You know, say your company name. You're you're a business owner. Um, I like this one. This one has been tested. So something like, "Thanks for calling Billy Superfence. How can I make you smile?" Here's why this is awesome. Because one, it sounds original. No one else is answering the phone like that. How can I make you smile? It's really putting all the focus on the customer and what you can do to make them happy. So the mood of the call has already been set. Like it's already starting off really good. You've already won brownie points because you're making them feel special and it's memorable. They're definitely gonna remember you for saying something like this. You know, I don't want to say that, Scott. That sounds really corny. How can I make you smile? That just doesn't go with my personality. Hey, you know, these, again, I'm not saying it's my way or the highway. I understand we're all different people. I'm saying this works. You can use it. Don't use it. You get the idea. Prospect says, yeah, I want to get a new fence for my yard. So what do you charge? Right? So, the untrained fencing sales professional would just give them a price. And that's what I you see on a lot of calls. It's what I hear a lot of calls is they just, what do you want? Oh yeah, we, we charge about, you know, 20 bucks a foot. Oh, okay, thanks. Click, calls over, done. Did they get the sale? Sometimes, not often, you know. It, uh, it, it, there's a better way. There's a better way. You can keep the call going, keep establishing rapport, get the information you need, and start selling based on value. So let's do it. So it would go like this. Sure, I'd love to help you out with that. Let me start off by getting some basic information, please. Um, can I get your full name, address, and email? So you're gonna get that. And here's where you could, if you're by a computer, um, you know, use something like Google Earth to get the footage or my salesman tool or something like that. Otherwise, if you're out on the field, just get to a quiet space. And it's important that you're not like fumbling around with things in your truck or, you know, because people hear that. People really can hear that. I hear these calls where they're fumbling around with things in their truck and you can tell they're totally like working on an install while they're talking to the customer. And it really just sounds like you don't care. It, it sounds with all due respect, like you just don't give a damn. So I would really stray from that in my opinion is give the customer, give the call your full attention. All right, so you get the information, super. What's the best number to reach you at in case we get disconnected? 
All right. Now, talk about the fence they want. And here, you know, just focus on being more their advisor, their consultant here. You're not really looking to sell them. What kind of fence are you interested in? And it's good to use their name, by the way. You got their name. I don't have this in the slides, but use their name quite a bit, okay? Don't be afraid to use their name because for your prospect, that's the sweetest sound you can possibly say is their name. That's how twisted we are as people, but they absolutely love it. So what kind of fence are you interested in? I want a white, white vinyl fence um, around the side of my house and, and across the backyard. Okay, get, get the specifics. They're, they'll have an idea and here's where you know you know you can fit them into one of your products, something that, that could work well for them, right? So you can, you can do that part. Next, hot button. Why does Bob want the fence? This is extremely important to tie it all together at the end. Because if Bob starts to waffle, He's like, well, you know, I just don't know if I want to do that. You know, I understand you want that hot button. Okay, we'll get to that in a little bit. So why do you want the fence? Here's where we get the reasons. Maybe, uh, you know, they're closing on a house and they want to they wanna get it fenced in, um, which is really good, right? If they're closing on a house and, you know, that's a, that's a good sale. Um, our old fence is falling apart. We're selling. Our neighbors are always staring at us. It's creepy. Or the most common, my wife and I are exhibitionists and we want to be free to express ourselves in the backyard. How many of you all have, have gotten that, right? So you can use these. For instance, like if we're selling, if they say we're selling, we're selling our house. Okay, so how would you use that, right, as a hot button? Of course, the fence is going to increase curb appeal. It is going to add value to the home. It's something that is not gonna need to be taken over by the new owner. So it's gonna make it more easy to sell the house quickly, right? And then because the fence is gonna sell it likely, a, you know, a much, help the house sell at a, at a premium, you're going to get that back that money back quickly. So you here's how you kind of want to use these things. Next we want to find out which um actually Corey, before I get into this, do we want to ask if anyone has any questions or are they all taking naps or are you taking a nap? No, I'm I'm here. I'm I'm learning attentively. <laughs> but uh I do have one question here. We might be able to circle back to it, but this one says, and I'm reading it verbatim, multicultural, multiracial region that keeps looking for the best price. I'm getting into price matching and price beating, and it's starting to become a rat race. What can I do to mitigate this? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. And if I'm understanding it right, multicultural and all this, maybe in, in some markets, it's going to be I think what he's saying is, you know, we have areas that would be more high ticket white collar and we have areas that would be more um, more basic fence, something like that. It, it, selling based on value still applies. And and here's we're going to get to this in a little bit. But basically, for whoever asked that question, Corey, um, does it give a name? Yes, let me let me grab it. Alan Leslie. Alan. Okay, cool, Alan. So really people, you know, price is an issue and you know they say, you know, I'm looking for the best price and I've got three quotes and blah blah blah. That may just be a bad prospect, but really that people would rather invest a little more and get what they truly want, a fence that is not gonna sag, that's gonna stand the test of time, that they don't need to be calling someone out, you know, within six months to repair it, that has a solid warranty, 
that they know there's going to be no headaches. So by saying these types of things to justify your price, you can charge a higher price. So, you know, it's it's sure you got a quote for 3000 and and we're coming in for $4200 and you're saying to yourself, "My gosh, why would I ever pay an extra $1200?" Well, here's why. Our warranty is going to last 5 years longer than theirs. So this is going to be worry free, trouble free. We're going to include a post saver sleeve. So you go with the other guys for the cheaper price, okay, that's cool, but your posts are gonna end up rotting within a year or two. With us, it's not gonna happen. Your posts are gonna look brand new because we're gonna use post saver sleeves. Our installation process is much different. Okay, I can tell you that we install with much more concrete around the posts, making these a lot more sturdy during hurricane season and so on. So see what I mean? How you can really justify higher prices just with starting to say things about your installation process, your warranties, your unique selling propositions, you you can totally do it. You can totally do it. Is it as easy? Maybe not, but as, as long as you're equipped, as long as you start getting these sales skills in place, you can certainly do it. What's the worst that can happen if you say these things? I suppose you could just revert back and sell it to them for the cheapest price. Okay, you don't believe me? Well, I'll, okay, let's just give it to you for the price you want. I would totally try these things because it works, okay? It's proven to work. So hopefully that answers his question. Good question, Alan. All right, so I'm gonna move forward. So next question you're gonna ask in this is, are we on your first call? Are we your first call? Because we're trying to find out where they're at in the buying process. Do you need to be the one to educate them or have they already been through it? If they are, you know, okay, great. You know, how exciting. Or if they say, no, I actually have already gotten another quote. Okay, super. So we can save some time then. Would you mind sharing the specifics of that quote um, so you can compare one banana to another, right? And this way, if they're willing to do that, folks, then you're getting some ammunition because now you know what questions to ask them to give your quote. And no, you don't need to meet them at the same quote as, as um, enticing as that would be. Instead, pick it apart as in, okay, so you know they're gonna give you this kind of material. Now tell me about the installation. How are they going to install it? Are they gonna do this? Are they gonna add this? And in this way, you're you're getting all the information you need to give them a good quote. Ask about the warranty, right? What kind of warranty does it come with? Well, I don't know. Okay, well, with us, you know, we have a, a lifetime placement guarantee, you know, or or something, some other kind of warranty, or a two-year uh, craftsmanship warranty, or something like that. You know, you can start using these types of things and then that justifies you paying a higher price. Or, you know, they quoted you $2,000. Um, you know, how many reviews do they have? Are they brand new or so on? Okay, anyways. So get the details. You may wanna ask something like this. If they're more concerned with getting the cheapest price, or if quality material and installation matters more than cheapest price. This will give you a clue of kind of what type of prospect you have on the phone. What kind of budget, the next question, what kind of budget were you thinking you'd be comfortable investing in a fence? So if they are, your first, if you're their first call, right? and you gotta educate them a little bit. You don't just wanna find out the fence they want and give them a quote yet. We're not giving them any information yet. We'll get to that, all right? We're, we're still just asking questions. We're being good investigators, finding out if we can help them. What kind of budget were you thinking you'd be comfortable investing in a fence? Your prospect may tell you, well, you know, I was thinking it'd be about five, 10, 15 grand then you know you got a real prospect. Or they may say, I don't know. 
and you just say, okay, no problem. Well, if 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 they don't know, a lot of a lot of uh, fence contractors that are here on the phone don't know how to handle that, and they just drop it. People know, right? They know. So ask it again in a different way. This is the trick. This is how you do it. Well, if you had to guess, for anything that anyone dodges a question for you ever, period, just follow up with, okay, sure, no problem. Well, if you had to guess, because it's very hard for them to lie themselves out of that. It's very hard to keep it going. So just remember that one too, that's a biggie. Okay, sure, you don't know, got it. Well, if you had to guess, right? You can use that for almost anything. And just by giving that one little extra dig, you're gonna get the truth out of them. So then you know how to guide the, the sales conversation. Okay, prospect may show their cards here if they're qualified for high ticket or not. If they still dodge, then move to the next step. Okay, so here we go. Now, keep in mind, we've just been investigators at this point. We have not told them much of anything yet. And we certainly haven't given them a reason to say no to us yet, but we're getting a lot of good information that we need. So, and we're establishing rapport all in the same time. So now we're gonna wrap it up in a bow and we're just gonna give it to them exactly how they want, like they want. They are gonna have Christmas today for sure right now with this question. Assuming we can meet all your conditions of satisfaction, Bob, with regards to price, materials, and installation, how soon would you like to start? The almighty question. It's a great one. So we haven't given them a price yet, but we're seeing are they going to play ball or what? Where's this going? Because we're not saying that we're not going to give them the price that they want. We're not saying we're not going to give them the materials. We're not saying we're not going to do the installation exactly how it should be done we're saying assuming we can meet all your conditions of satisfaction with regards to price materials and installation how soon would you like to start see how now from where we were at in the beginning to where we're at now how we've wrapped this thing up like real tight that you don't need to be driving out Based on some of these answers to these questions, you don't need to be driving across town. Okay, you just simply need to be asking the right questions and you can wrap these things up in what? Under, under 10 minutes? So that's how you do it. Prospect says ASAP, or they say, I'm not sure. All right, if they say, I'm not sure, then what do you do? Oh, okay. Well, if you had to guess. Use the almighty question if you had to guess. Then they will come back with something. If prospect says in two to three months, here's where you want to probe. Okay, because that's a little far off. They're calling you and they're calling you now, but you know, people don't just call up a fence contractor for no reason. All right, so there's some genuine interest there. Find out what's going on. Two to three months. Why? Well, you know, money or you know, find out if it's a valid reason. If it's money, well, if you offer financing, then you know what to do there, right? They're, well, you know, I'm waiting for my tax return and I just want to, you know, get my ducks in a row now and do my research. So if, if that's the case, you know, all is not lost. If you offer financing, give them a reason why they should do it now. Say, well, look, you know, I get it. You know, I, I understand money can be tight sometimes. Um, on our end, let me just explain something that we're running a really huge special for vinyl fences right now. And it just so happens that we offer financing. So, I mean, if we can get you into a fence that you want at, you know, one of the lowest prices that we're going to have all year for as little as, you know, a hundred bucks a month, would you be willing to get this done sooner rather than later? See how we did that? They're thinking two to three months, but now you gave them an option and a reason that they could feasibly actually do this now, right? They wanted to wait a few months for tax return money to come or whatever. 
But now you're giving them new information that, okay, for, you know, whatever, a hundred bucks a month, they could actually get into this thing through financing and get a, a much better price. So think, think like that. And if they still balk on something like that, because you, you guys aren't, you know, you're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised that they're going to call you back in two to three months. In two to three months, they're probably not even going to remember who you are. They're just going to be doing another search on Google. So with that said, if they still want to balk on that and say, well, you know, I, I would rather just wait until, until that time, um, you know, when I actually have the money. I mean, you could maybe do one little extra little push and say, well, you know, I, I totally understand. You know, I was just thinking that, you know, we have this special where you could save 10% and we're adding post sleeves in at, at no extra charge. So it's like a huge value. And, um, you know, since you're going to be getting the money in the fence at that time anyway, I just thought, you know, it would make sense that you go ahead and do it now and save that money. Give it one more shot, right? See what happens. Sometimes it, it just pays to be a, a little, little more persistent. If you're willing to give it that little extra 10%, you're going to blow away most of your competition because are they doing this? No, no, they're not. And trust me, they're not. I've listened to the calls. Optional strategy, and that is, you know, going through the online estimating tool with them using something like my salesman to get them a quote. And so basically you could go through the same process with them that I shared with you. But um, instead, you know, pull it up on a, uh, an estimating tool as well. So you could do something like super. So let me enter, enter your property details. OK, I'm pulling it up on a satellite. Oh, this looks nice from the aerial view. Is that you standing out there waving in front of me, waving at me? You know, you get a little giggle from them. So let's get in the style offense options you want. This would be a way to start it off, folks, if you wanted to do one of those tools, one of those online estimating tools, you could go through the same thing that way. This is really nice if you have salespeople or someone answering the phone at the office because now they have a set system to go by. And I would actually have a script laid out for them. All the pros use a script, I mean, keep, keep a script. I mean, I understand that, um, in sales that you, know, you wanna have a genuine real conversation, but have, there's nothing wrong with having an outline, especially for you know, new salespeople coming in. So here, in the end, here's what you wanna hear. You want your prospect to say, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that sounds reasonable, or what are the next steps, or let's do it, or okay. And then of course, you just book the final estimate and walk through. Um, preferably within the next 24 hours. Do your due diligence, take your measurements, bring your, bring your measuring tape, yeah, and then, uh, and then that's pretty much it, button it up. But what you can do is by asking these questions, you're gonna have it 90% done, 90% done. And you can give them the price over the phone as long as you're ready and willing to, to justify it. There's nothing wrong with that. What we will not accept is an, okay, I'll think about it and call you back, or I'll need to get back to you, or how can I get back in touch with you? What's your name again? Can you send me this in writing, please? Um, I'll have to talk to my to my husband or my wife, um, and I'll get back to you. Don't accept any of those, okay? Because whoever you talk to, they have their own opinion, and they're just playing dodgeball. And so, after this much time on the call, we're we're not going. And this isn't some like aggressive closing technique. This is just again not being a pushover um, and, and just being direct. So if they say, you know, something like that, I want to think about it, may I ask what exactly it is you need to think about? Okay, I don't, I, this is, this gets right to it. May I ask what it is exactly you need to think about? And get into it. Is it the price? Is it the timing? Find out. And then that will steer you in the right direction. So hopefully you can overcome that and say, 
Okay, so you know, with that said, now how do you feel about that? Do you feel like this is still a good solution for you? Yes. Yeah, I do. Bob says, yeah, yeah. Now that you put it that way, I do. Okay, super. So I can be out there later this afternoon or tomorrow to do some final uh, measurements and and get this going. Sound good? Yep, yep. Sounds good. Sounds good. That's it. You got it buttoned up before you even drove out there. Can you send me this in writing? All right, this is another dodgeball technique. Sure, sure. All right, here's how you handle that. You don't ever want to tell them no. Don't tell them no or I can't do that, but you know, just play along. Sure, uh, no no problem. May I ask how you feel about the solution? Cuz after you give them the price, you go through all this, you give them the price, you know, then the call gets really real. And so you want to find out, you want to overcome objections. Price is too high. So you give them the price and then they tell you, no, nah, you know, that's too much. Too much, too much money. Don't, here's, here's another, another sore spot that I, I see fence contractors get really defensive about their prices. You know, and then they start bad, <laughs> then they start bad mouthing their competitors. And, um, and that's really not the way you want to go because when you do that, it's actually, it's actually just reflecting badly on you. So it's, it's better off not to do that. So just put them back on the spot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. Keep, keep it very cool. Our price is too high compared to what? See, see where their head's at. Where are they going with this? If you do that and they say, look, you know, I understand. I did. I had no idea. I had no idea this fence was going to cost me $10,000, you know, um, and I got another quote here from another guy and, he, you know, he's only charging me $8,000. So here's where you can sell on value. Here's a little um, rebuttal you can use if you like. With a fence, you truly get what you pay for. I can assure you it's better to invest a little more than expected to get what you truly want than to pay too little and get a saggy fence with headaches. A huge portion of our business comes from fixing other fence contractors' mistakes or shortcuts on materials and installations. So to be direct, our price is justified by using the highest quality materials on the market and our installation process. So this includes pouring more concrete for the posts so they're more durable and don't sag, better quality screws along with a post saver sleeve so your posts don't rot. Um, this way you actually get a fence that's going to stand the test of time. Does that make sense? Give it a shot. What are they gonna say? No, that doesn't make sense. That makes no sense at all. You use the highest quality materials and and you know of course it makes sense the question is are they willing to pay more for quality if they say yeah that 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 actually does make sense you know people are buying you they are buying who's ever selling your fences they are buying that trust that personality that likability so just by saying something like this they may say you know this this guy's great or this gal's really great i i don't mind you know, I'll pay him the extra 1500 bucks and I'm going to get all this extra. This sounds awesome. Throw in a free walk gate. If they're getting 150 feet of fence installed, give them a free walk gate. I tell you what, you know, you seem like a really nice guy and I don't normally do this, but um, I'm going to throw in an extra walk gate free of charge. And that's that's normally a $350 value, but I'll do that for you. Okay, super. So I can have an estimator out uh, later this afternoon or tomorrow to wrap this up. What works better for you? Price is too high. I'll do one more of these. I'd be inclined to agree with you, Bob. Our price is high, but good things aren't cheap and cheap things aren't good. Our company had to make a choice. We could either design and install fences that we could sell as cheaply as possible, or we could design and build fences that stand the test of time. We chose the latter and our clients are glad we did. So it's more than just a, a cliche, Bob. You should invest in the best from the start 
or you'll be stuck paying for the get by fence in the end. Would you agree? It's all in how you say these things and does it take a little practice? Yeah, does it take a little conviction? Yeah, does it work? You bet, you bet it does. And at the end of the year, if you're selling fences this way or your sales reps are selling fences this way, that extra $800, $1,000, that really adds up, right? Sales killers, bad mouthing competition. You know, these, these are things that really are going to leave a bad taste in your prospect's mouth. They're not professional. Blaming your price on extra overhead. Well, our cost is high because we got all these employees and, you know, I got all this extra overhead. That's why I can't give you this price. <laughs> Don't go there. Your customer doesn't care. Showing frustration when it comes to price. That's, you know, that's one I hear too is, what do you mean my price is high? What do you know? I've been in this industry for 20 years. I've been selling fences since before you were born, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's not going to work. It's not going to work. You're certainly not going to make a sale like that. Telling a prospect you can't do that, just instead of if you can't do something, um, try to spin it another way that's a little more pleasing. Like instead of can't say, you know, um, let's focus on how we can get to yes. I understand what you want, um, but I believe we can offer you a much better solution. Let me explain why. Kind of steer it that way. Instead, put the focus on the positive, right? With how do we get to yes, so we can get you what you want. The best quality fence at a price you're comfortable with. Here's a suggested reading. It's um, Zig Ziglar, Secrets of Closing the Sale. And um, the reason why I like this book is it's just a really easy read and there's uh, literally hundreds of different closing techniques and all different kinds of scenarios that you can think of. And what I used to do is um, actually, you know, go through and just page by page, take the different closes and then write them on the inside cover so I could quickly reference them based on the situation, if that makes sense. So like if someone says price is too high, I quickly find it in there, go to that page. And you, you know, you after a, a little practice and just staying at it for a little bit, it becomes second nature. Um, but this is a really awesome book. So um, Corey, we're gonna go ahead here and pretty much wrap this up. We'll do a Q&A here. And um, you know, let's find out some takeaways from people. What did they learn? What did you notice? What would you like to share? I would love to get some feedback before we uh, get into a Q&A. Maybe you can get some feedback from some people. Let's see here. I have a couple of good questions. Um, since you just mentioned feedback, I'll give it a second for those to come in. Um, but I'm going to fire a, a question off at you. Sure, man. Let's do it. Some, so somebody asked, um, Mr. David O'Brien, how do you see a financing option helping with sales? Hey, David. So, yeah, that's a really good question. And financing helps with sales by making it easier to buy. Period. Because people, especially with the financing options that are out there, um, there's there's quite a few from different companies, which you can reach out to me and I can get you some more names off the top of my head. I can't think of them all. Um, I'm thinking Synchrony, Wells Fargo, but there's more. But they'll do like some of them 18 months, same as cash. So in other words, if you sell them a $7,000 fence, they got 18 months to pay it off before there is any interest. And all they need to do is be making equal monthly payments. So a $7,000 fence divided by 18 months is, you know, you do the math, that's that's pretty affordable. And, and so if it comes into a money situation, that's how you use the financing to make the sale. Good question. Awesome, great answer. So I have another one. What do you think about adding a discount to each quote only if the quote is accepted in the first seven days of being issued? 
while still hitting your target profit margins. It's similar to your point about selling sooner rather than later by offering financing or the free post leaves that they won't get if they wait and do it later in the year. What do you think about an incentive of somebody accepting a quote within the first seven days getting a discount? As long as you said like you're still hitting your profit margin, then I don't see a problem with it. My guess is that what you're doing is you're really um, baking it into the price. So you're, you're, if you're giving them a 10% discount, then you're really just telling them an upfront price that's 10% higher, it sounds like, which I have no problem with at all. Can you explain the sales funnel slash email campaign to put tire kickers in? Would love to indirectly target those individuals without the effort of checking back in manually. Sure. So there's a couple ways to go about that. With, um, for instance, if they fill out a contact form, you can have that contact form through like active campaign. So right, they fill out a lead for to for a quote. You can have that automatically go into a lead nurture funnel through Active Campaign, and it's a fully automated process done. And so Bob would keep getting emails from you as long as you have them mapped out in the series through Active Campaign. You could have them going for a month, two months, three months, where you're dripping Bob an email, say, twice a week. Um, and you need to be creative with the content. I could probably share some ideas with you on that. And of course, these people can always unsubscribe if they don't want to get your emails, but you know, most people are lazy and they don't even unsubscribe. So it would keep you at the, the forethought of their mind when they're ready to get going. So that's how you would handle those. And then of course, when they become a client, you would just delete them from active campaign manually and, and it's done. How do you respect how do you respectfully turn low ticket sales away when you're already booked out for the next three months? Well, how do you respectfully turn low ticket sales? Who who's asking this? I would love to get their name too, so I could just address them personally. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that came from a Blake Gasaway. Blake. Okay, cool. Hey Blake. Um, so it's a low ticket sale and you want to turn them away because you're booked three months out. So it sounds like you, you really just don't want them as a customer because they're a low ticket sale. Um, at, a, at a minimum, I would try to refer them to someone just so they feel helped um, rather than just saying, you know, I, I can't help you. You know, if you could at least do that. Um, because if you can't sell them on a higher value, then uh, you know it's no sense in just working for dollars to trade dollars. So I, I think that's how I would approach that. I I agree with that, and and if I could, Blake, I'd I'd actually say you know seek out one of your AFA members that are around you that are that are getting started, and see if you guys can build a rapport and send send referrals that way send you know maybe you not, you might not need that low ticket sale but but somebody else might need that so that's a yeah. great way to start looking true so i have one that's uh that that's personal and i'm actually interested in the answer to this one too what was the biggest difference you found between the timeshare business and the fence business the timeshare industry and the fence industry. And that question was asked by, believe it or not, Michael Jackson. Ha, what's up, Mike? Love your music. You're still a legend to this day. Um, let's see. So, I mean, timeshares is a really funny animal. <laughs> I was glad to get out of it. But, um, you know, there's a huge difference. For one, timeshares is totally intangible, which I'll explain. Fences are totally tangible. They get something for their money. With Timeshares, they actually don't get any real estate property whatsoever. They get an investment in time. As ridiculous as that sounds, you can actually sell time. So, and I'm not knocking anyone who got a timeshare, you know, it forces you to take a vacation every year. That's great. Um, and so I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna knock anyone that way, but it just turns out that it's um, it's it's more of a uh, an intangible sell. 
And so it needs to be pushed a lot harder in a lot more aggressive manner than a fence. Um, it, and so it's just a completely different industry. Okay. It looks like that's all the questions that, that I have right now. Cool, cool. So here's what we covered, folks. How to handle inbound sales calls for high ticket residential fences, overcoming common objections, maximizing your leads, sales killers of what not to say. And we had our Q&A. So if you need some help, if you want some help, then um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. I'll give you uh, both my information and uh, the AFA's contact information in a moment. But for all you who stayed till the end, you deserve a reward. You can go to fencemarketingteam.com fence marketing forward slash reward and get the ultimate fence and gate online marketing checklist, as well as the most commonly searched fence keywords for SEO and pay-per-click. So if you want to chat fence with me, you're, you're more than welcome. Feel free to reach out. I can be reached scott at fencemarketingteam.com. Or if you want to reach out to the AFA to chat with them or help, just go to americanfenceassociation.com. Is that about right, Corey? I got the domain right, right? Yeah, that's right. Hit the, hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've, we've come to the end of our presentation, guys. Thank you so very much for joining us. Keep in mind, this is part one of our, of our strategy series as we're, as we're referring to it. Um, Scott, thank you so much for your time. We're, we're looking forward to having you on again. Hey, my pleasure. This was a lot of fun. Thanks for everyone who uh, spent their valuable time uh, listening. I hope you got a lot out of it too. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sure they did. I know I learned a lot. I'm over here jotting down <laughs> notes myself. Get, hey, type in some ones. If you got some value out of this, just type a one in the chat. Let me know if you're seeing any ones, Corey. If not, Absolutely. I'm going to be super pissed. <laughs> <laughs> any okay, ones guys. in chat? At least one. If we could help one person from this webinar. <laughs> there it is. I see one. You got a one? I got one. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. We made we made someone's day, so that's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, guys, as a as a reminder, if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to reach out at Scott. His email is right on the screen. Scott at fencemarketingteam.com. If you want any information pertaining to American Fence Association, what we do, the services we provide to our members or if you just had questions about this webinar and maybe you lost Scott's, Scott's info and you want to get in touch with him, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. That's member services at AmericanFenceAssociation.com. Member services at AmericanFenceAssociation.com. Scott, thank you again and everybody else. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Awesome. Thank Take you. care. Have a good one. Mm -hmm. Bye.